beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, on this eve of the feast of the patron saint of the metropolis of New Jersey, the holy and golden-mouthed John Chrysostomus, Archbishop of Constantinople, I extend my warmest best wishes to you and to every soul within this God-saved eparchy. As the patriarchal vicar, I rejoice to celebrate this feast with you, one so great that it was transferred to this day so that it would not conflict with the actual day of the blessed saint reposed. Many are surprised to learn that the Holy Chrysostom was reposed on the Feast of the Universal Exaltation of the Holy Cross, September 14th. But because of his momentous importance for the life and for the liturgy of the Church, his feast was transferred to November 13th. Perhaps more surprising is the fact that he died in exile. He died alone, suffering, and without the slightest comfort. But he was the Archbishop of Constantinople, a figure whose magnificent mosaic icon adorns Hagia Sophia today in Constantinople. And to this day, we hold him to be the greatest preacher who has ever lived, preacher who was known in his lifetime as Chrysostomos. Chrysostomos was not his name. His name was Ioannis, the golden mouth, because of his eloquence and the 1,447 sermons we still possess today. Just as renowned was his amazing command of the Holy Scripture, his commentaries on the divine scriptures are exhaustive. He was the author of more works than any other church father. He composed commentaries on the book of Genesis, the Gospels of Saints Matthew and John, the book of Acts, and all the epistles of the Holy Apostle Paul. We have 240 of his own letters. And besides his feast today, we also celebrate the translation of his holy relics back to Constantinople on January 27, and his celebration as one of the three hierarchs on January 30th, together with Saints Basil the Great and Gregory the Theologian. So, why did he die in exile? How could such an historic figure of the Church be cast aside by Christian civilization? The answer, my beloved friends, is simple. It was for his honesty, his truthfulness, and his fidelity to gospel. For his so-called crimes of speaking the truth in love, he was literally marched to death in the harsh terrain leading to the Caucasus Mountains in eastern Pondos. Politics invaded the church as it has so many times in our history. Let us not forget that the order to crucify our Lord Jesus Christ was given by a governor, governor of the Roman Empire. But it is not man who writes the last word in the history books. It is God. Therefore, my beloved Christians, we must never despair. We must never give up. We must hold on to our hope and to our expectation of the blessing of Almighty God. St. John Chrysostom died in exile, but his last words were, Glory to God for everything. Doxa to Theo pandon eneken. This cry of conviction, this shout of faith, 
makes me think of the verse from St. Paul that we read in every funeral service. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yes, my beloved Christians, the shout of faith that was exclaimed with the Holy Chrysostom's last breath has resounded to this present day and to this time, more than 1600 years after his dormition. The names of his captors, his tormentors, and his persecutors are lost in the dustbin of history. But John, Ioannis Chrysostomos, was received after a mere 30 years back to Constantinople. He was brought back in a glorious golden casket. And before that return, in victory and vindication, the people of God were already calling him a saint of God. His precious relics were stolen in 1204 by the Fourth Crusaders, by barbaric marauders masking as Christians in the shameful Fourth Crusade. But thanks to our ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew, a direct successor to St. John Chrysostom, these holy relics were returned in Constantinople in the year 2004, where they were led to rest once again, this time from the Vatican to the Patriarchal Church of St. George at the Fanar. Therefore, tonight, in the midst of our own struggles and temptations, in the midst of our own difficulties and challenges, and in the face of this pandemic and the trials of this world, let us cry aloud with the saint of God, Doxa to Theo, Pandon Enekin. Amen.